Welcome to episode 30 of So You Want to Be a Star in the Music Business. Today we're taking a trip around the world. We're talking about travel. Uh, if you are performing, uh, part of your uh, psyche should say, I've got to go wherever the work is. If you're a big time star, you're going to be hitting big stadiums all over the world. You may also just say, hey, I want to give Europe a try. They have a lot of uh, places that accept new artists. Why don't I go over to Germany and do that? Um, gee, I heard somebody in Brazil said I can work there. Or simply, I'm going to go out to Boulder, Colorado. There's a pub near my uncle's dry cleaning store that uh, says I can play there. All of these uh, are not as simple as it sounds. So we're going to start with foreign travel. Uh, the first thing to know about is that most countries require what's called a working visa. You must remember that people living in whatever country it is, they want the work. So you are a foreigner going into another country and making money there. So they want you to sign up, explain what you're doing there, uh, how much money you're going to make, and then they want to know you're leaving. So you may have to work with an embassy. If you have a number of people, um, you're going to have to bring in passports. You're going to have to uh, tell them about who your mother and father's fir their first name, what year you were born. Bring in documentation. You may have to physically go in and pay a significant amount of money up front. So if you're negotiating a booking agreement, you want to make sure you're getting reimbursed. Uh, there's no way that the people in Brazil can send you the money in advance. They, they may know how much it is, but it's over $400 a person. Uh, and then you must go into uh, a nearby uh, major city embassy, fill out the forms, bring them in pictures, wait a day, come back and pick it up during the hours that they tell you you must. doesn't matter if you have a job, you have to show up. So please be aware that every country is different. Certainly, if you are an unknown entity, it's called being under the radar. You can go into Mexico and say you're just a tourist and quickly play at some small club or cafe, uh, make a little money, stick it in your pocket, and get out of the country as fast as you can. And take advantage for as long as you, you can. Go. There you go. But if you're not under the radar, you're going to need to do it. Next point, Kevin. Just, I mean, foreign travel is, I mean, if there's anywhere you even haven't been within this country, you already know how difficult it is to travel. But going somewhere where the language is different, where the money's different, and the small things that we don't even think about, like just simply plug it in uh, a pair of clippers or for ladies, a, a, you know, I don't know what you call it, a hair dryer or anything like that. So anything that requires a plug, different countries also have different types of outlets and you need converters. So you just have to be prepared for things you didn't think about. So... Uh, I know when I took a trip to Europe, I'm thinking, yeah, I got $1,000 in my pocket, which quickly turned to $500 because of the currency exchange rates. So when you get paid from these different performers, you have to keep in mind the, the difference in currency. And this is stuff that may seem simple, but a lot of people don't even realize. I know my first trip, um, definitely didn't even think about it. So these, these are things people have to tell you. And you want to make sure that your money is converted into U.S. dollars as often as possible. And certainly when you arrive in the country, if the purchaser, the buyer, the promoter, if they are willing, you need to ask them for some per diem in the local currency. That means that just in case you run out of money, uh, they're giving you some of your money already converted, uh, and it should arrive in your hands when you arrive at the airport. Yeah, and I guess, and speaking of the airport, um, depending on how you set up your travel, some people already have international phones, some people get phones as soon as they get there, like in the airport, some, some type of prepaid phone. Um, so to try to make it as easy as possible, whatever your current service is, and try to investigate the options that they have for global service, or just keep in mind, you just may have to get one as soon as you get there, because that, that communication is going to be key um, out of the country. It's definitely a, a big deal. I've never been to so many internet cafes in my life until I got to Europe. So just make sure you have some type of communication, whether it's that cell phone or somebody else has a good phone to use, but um, that's, that's going to be huge. And one example, of course, uh, Verizon, you actually buy a separate phone from them a week, two weeks in advance for $20. Two weeks to be safe. 
two weeks to be safe, and it's, uh, it's only $20, and it's installed with your phone number on it, but it works in the particular country you're going to. Uh, don't forget to tell your bank, if you're using a debit card or a Visa card coming from your bank, tell them where you're going. This way they won't stop it thinking that somebody is using your number illegally in another country. There's a lot of preparation that you need to do. This is real important. If you get stuck there, it's going to cost you a fortune. You're going to lose every penny you just th you thought you were going to make. And I guess it's something yeah, we skip real basic passports. Um, even if you think, like, there's nothing on the radar right now, um, you never know how, how s your career just kind of just starts to snowball um, when you start getting bigger and bigger. And you just, if there's a gig that comes up and you can travel, but you don't have a passport, and that's something pretty basic, get your passport ASAP, even if there's nothing scheduled right now. So you just want to always be prepared, just in case. And if you got a band, don't say, hey, I got mine, I don't have to worry about it. No, call them all up. Have you done it? Do you have it? When does it expire? Don't, you know, remember, right. you may be smart, but your band members may not be. You have to care for each other. Um, in addition, though, in an emergency, there are companies <coughs> that for about $200, some of them more, will get you a passport overnight. Uh, not from the beginning, but a renewal of a passport. That's why it's essential to make sure that you have one, even if you're not going anywhere because it takes it, uh, quite a while to get the first one. Yeah. And I've seen too many movies. Make sure it's a legit company you're going to for that overnight passport. Right. Not yep. some guy make it in the basement. Best place. Yeah, that <laughs> happens. Best place is the U.S. passport, by the way. U.S. passport office will actually do it overnight for about half the price of a private company. But you do have to check on their rules. You probably have to give up half a day of your time. Um, but you can do it and at least you know it's the legitimate place. Um, moving right along into just traveling in the U.S. Bring it back on. Right. Um, I, one of the things for your band that I'd like to bring up is travel agents. Uh, ever since the internet took over, uh, travel agents uh, are found in fewer and fewer places. They make less and less money, and therefore they're... Um, struggling more. The issue for a musical group or a big artist is that you will, in your travels, get messed up by the airlines. That is, you know, the definition of an airline. A company that will try to mess you up. <laughs> Forgive my politics. Um, they cost a fortune. You have no choice. They find more ways to charge you money every time your bag costs too much and one airline charges you for this bag, the other airline charges you for that bag. One way or the other, it's a fortune. If you have a connecting flight, there's, in my, my experience, is that 40% of the time, you will miss the connecting flight. That's huge. Especially if you've got a show and you definitely can't be late. Right. And, and it, you, you can't afford that. So you need to have a backup. That's where a travel agent comes in. You're paying them probably $50 per ticket for them to set it up. But if you end up in uh, Atlanta without a connecting flight, you call them up day or night, and it's their job to pick up the phone, find a personal contact they have, and get you on a flight so that you're not just competing with the hundreds of other people who are also missing their connecting flights. You want an advantage, so you have to decide if that's worth it for you. Um, certainly, if you're trying to get a large group on one airline, you may need help. You, Expedia may not be able to give you 12 tickets on and the not same for, airline. Not for you, your backup dancers and your drummer and your bass guitarist and your hype man. And, and right. It's too much work. Right, and, and it's better that you work on your music than your travel. But again, it's $50 per ticket, so that's significant. It's worth it. Um, Along with that, in connecting flights, please, uh, again from experience, do not agree to a connecting flight that is less than an hour. Your plane will be late. And, and remember, so will your yeah, luggage. And so will your luggage, and your luggage may not make it. Uh, if you try to take anything important and expensive with you on the plane, 
this is all information for everybody, whether you're in a musical group or not. But chances are it's better to have a lot of extra time sitting in an airport, two hours, three hours, mm -hmm. have lunch, sit around, watch TV, play with your iPad, do whatever you have to do, better than missing a connecting flight. Remember, the weather in your town has nothing to do with the weather on the way to where you're going. And that can terribly affect how you get there. Right. So with the rising gas prices, everything is more expensive. Ground transportation. So everything is determined by the price of gas. Uh, one, one way to help, at least on the try not to pay more for luggage or just transporting things, um, anything that you can that's a little bit heavier possibly, try to ship it in advance. So if you use FedEx or some other way to ship it, it's probably going to be cheaper than paying the extra airline cost or um, anything like that. So that'll save you some time and money. And also, um, as far as ground transportation, just keep in mind how you're getting to the airport and whatever your destination city is, how are you getting from the airport to wherever you're going to stay or perform? On that note, I mean, obviously, uh, we could talk forever on this because every time uh, some of our clients travel, it's a different situation. So just be aware there's a lot to think about. And on that note, I'm Mitch Weiss. Kevin Curtin. This is MW Entertainment Group. So uh, it's youtube.com slash M-W-E-N-T group. Same as Facebook. And uh, Twitter is at underscore M-W-E-G. And we'll see you on episode 31. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. See you on the next episode. Take care.